Hello, I'm Shield War 100, and uh, welcome to another of my quick critiques. Uh, today, I'm going through the uh, the latest, well, the next batch of releases from Night Models, the Suicide Squad box set, and some uh, in a future video are some accompanying blisters. But today, we're going to focus on the box set itself, the Suicide Squad, and, and the characters contained there, therein. It's an interesting one because uh, this is uh, a standalone team in its own right. You can uh, take the contents of this box and uh, use them as their own crew in the Batman miniatures game but also um, it being well it being a team it consists of a whole bunch of free agents and things which you can use within your existing crews so I'm gonna be looking at obviously as always the models and the model sculpts see how well they're put together you know any comments uh, or things which you might find tricky etc on there and uh, also then the you know diving into the rules for these models and uh, we'll see how they work as a team and also and di dispersed amongst you know other crews as well which models are the ones to watch right well that's enough of that let's get into it Right, well, let's uh, have a look at the models and things, shall we? Because, uh, yes, the build quality is important in a premium game such as, uh, such as this one. Premiumly costed, that is, at least. <laughs> and, um, yeah, well, first of all, I just got to say I am incredibly impressed with this set. I'm. Uh, it looks like whatever method they're using to cast, or whichever mixture they're using to cast with, the material feels the same. However, they've obviously possibly changed the mix a little bit, or maybe I've just got a an odd batch. But um, the reports are suggesting that this might be the case. That uh, it's just a lot firmer these uh, these sculpts. So whatever they're doing, they've managed to keep the. Um, the detail quality as well as uh, well they've reduced the rubberiness shall we say of the uh, of the of the cast which is a great boon bonus a lot of people complain that the existing ones are a little bit too flexible shall we say I never had a problem it's a case of you still need to use a really really sharp new blade um, whenever you get a chance to really or close to new as soon as it starts failing to cut through cleanly you've really got to move on I'm afraid um, with this set and uh, well, with this material but once you do that you get used to it it's no problem and I've had nothing but success almost uh, and um, we'll go ahead so but let's have a look at who we've got here so uh, first of all I'm going to start with well the Harley Quinn always uh, stands out so we'll start with her so here she is the lovely lady herself I'll just let the camera focus and yeah like I said all the details on here just really nice they've come out really well don't forget she was wearing a nice frilly dress during the uh, this film and she's brought the javelin that she ended up lumping around with her for the most part as well so yeah really nice really good sculpt um, took me a while to work out this uh, this right arm holding the javelin took me a while to work out how to fit it on I had one of those derp moments <laughs> where I was, you know when you're just trying to dry fit a model and you're just your brain's malfunctioning and it's just not working but it, it does go it does go there you do it's just working out that this was her hair rather than a part of her dress and stuff like that <laughs> in the end we got there but yeah no problem at all uh, interestingly I haven't mentioned that yet all these models come with base toppers including uh, film, film themed ones because they've got little dead mini starros flapping around on them as well so again um, oh just something I mean, didn't mention none of these models have uh, had to have any green stuffing done on them at all even on to cover up the slots because of those base toppers so very happy so that's Harley Quinn uh, oh one other thing the models in this set um, will to avoid spoilers I'm not going to tell you which ones of them die because uh, a lot of these models die at varying points in the film uh, a lot of these characters shall I say die at varying points in the film some rather early on some rather late on some not at all and uh, yeah to avoid spoilers I'm not going to tell you who that is uh, I don't know the criteria for selection of these models seems to have been to form up a, a quite a balanced team as opposed to anything else as opposed to their star level but uh, yeah it's 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 just to say that yeah okay anyway uh, yeah so no green stuff either so this is Idris Elba's play of uh, Bloodsport a character I was not familiar with before this film but apparently he is one from the comics and if I get in on that face I don't know I think they've done a crackingly good job of his gorgeous features there uh, Idris Elba one of the best looking men alive if you ask me uh, but no one does so that's fine but they managed to capture his likeness pretty well if you ask me there so if you needed a um, an Idris Elba head for some nefarious hobby project then you've got one in here um, they managed to also get him 
pointing right, looking right down the crosshairs of his slingshot launcher thing. And uh, yeah, so very, very impressed with the sculpt on this one. A really easy one to put together as well. Went together, no problems at all. And you know, any small gaps will be covered by the painting. So there you go. Uh, moving on, we'll go to Peter Capaldi as the thinker with his um, things what make his brain work. So I'm just trying to get it to focus, please. There he is, just about. Yeah, again, pretty, if you ask me, a well, pretty good likeness as to how he's made up in the film. I'm not going to say he gets out of bed looking like that every day with the lumps and all, but yeah, and uh, a fairly ordinary, you know, looking you know, attire for him. Scenic base with starros on it. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty, be a fairly straightforward paint job. Looking forward to getting him out there. Uh, let's see who we've got next. Rat Catcher 2. Uh, not. I don't think there has been a rat catcher 2 in DC, but there is now, and here she is. Yeah, this young lady with her um, taming rat taming device as well. Swarm of rats around her feet, nice touch there. Should make it a lot harder to paint. Can't wait. Great, awesome. And uh, but yeah, there you go. Nice, simple, straightforward joins. Nothing too difficult to uh, to put together there whatsoever. Uh, who else? Ah, TDK. Not uh, the detachable kid, as he's known. Oh, come on, there he is. Yes, Nathan Fillion, I believe. Um, obviously, you can't really tell, uh, but uh, yes, in his uh, stunning role within the film and interestingly yes his arms are separate at the uh, the joints so if you were feeling uh, frisky with magnets you could certainly do uh, do something with that about that and yeah again solid solidly good sculpt very easy to put together a bit of dry fitting and you know that just well it was just easy peasy and uh, yeah nice uh, polka dot man you heard it right, it's another version of Polka Dot Man, but a uh, very, very much easier build than the um, the original, than the other one from Night Models from the Dark Knight, Legends of the Dark Knight range. But yeah, uh, very cool, very, very interesting character in the film. Some, some definitely has some mother issues. And, uh, but yes, uh, be looking forward to putting him, yeah, yeah, but, sorry, be looking forward to using him in games. Trust me, this one I'll tell, I'll tell you when I get to his rules, but yeah, uh, solid, um, solid sculpt again. I think you're, you know, just showing you off. I uh, just the fact is, there was just no real faults with this kit, with this whole group of models, so uh, yeah, nothing to really report means not much to talk about right now, but I can at least show them off. And finally, Weasel, yes, um, is Weasel. There's really not much to say about Weasel. Uh, I honestly don't know if uh, this has ever been in a comic, ever. But there he is. He's, he's Weasel. Weasel. Yeah. Oh, and also some surprise um, entries with some rat swarms. Uh, sewer swarms, as they are officially called. Get three of these, thank goodness, because, uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're dashed handy to have. They go with uh, Rat Catcher, of course. And, yes, extra rats to paint. I can't wait. Ugh. But yeah, overall, really impressively sculpt, sculpted set. I hope you agree. Um, the, there's dynamism where it counts, and uh, yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't fault it. To be perfectly honest, this time, um, I try to be honest. Obviously, if you see anything that I missed or what have you, then I mean, somehow that I missed, or any sort of like issues you might have with poses or what have you, then yeah, obviously, let me know in the comments below. But uh, shall we get on and have a look at how this team actually works in the game? I think we should. Well, I'll be back in just a second, having uh, got their rules nearby. Okay, well, let's straight up start looking at Harley Quinn because that's who we looked at first when it comes to the models. Uh, yeah, so I'll just bring up a, yes, here's a card on screen as you should be able to see now. Once I've done some editing, go for it editingly. Um, right, this is this Harley Quinn, the Suicide Squad Harley Quinn, as, as as opposed to the the last Suicide Squad Harley Quinn or any of the other Harley Quinns. Uh, this one's a free agent, not a sidekick for the Joker crew. Um, affinity unknown, which means that she'll work for anyone apart from Batman as 
the rivals column will uh, attest. So anyone apart from the quote unquote goodies can have her. Um, so yeah, she's 81 rep, not a not an inconsiderable amount, and 150 dollars funding. Uh, so she's going to have a ranged weapon of some sort, and it's probably that javelin. Uh, will power endurance seven and seven, which is kind of standard for your you know your your free age your, your powerful free agent level attack and defense four. That's consistent with other Harley Quinns, as is the rest of her stat line. To be perfectly honest, a five plus ac- uh, five plus strength, twelve inch move, which is really fast, really fast, and uh, three inch and a th- special value of three as standard. Her weapons is where things start to stand out because you're going to be looking at what differentiates this Harley Quinn from others, and uh, definitely uh, the weaponry. Normally she's uh, stuck with her baseball bat or her big old mallet or whatnot, and she's doing lots of stun damage which knocks people out this lady has a javelin however and she is all blood all day all the way and reach two as well you'll see there and uh, yeah reach means that she can attack from up to two inches away when it's two when it's reach two reach one would be one inch reach two is two inches so easy peasy missing out on the uh, the usual like other buffs like heavy maybe or 360 attack 360 degree attack she gets some some of her versions i think she might also get handy as well on uh, in, in in some places i can't quite remember but either way she's just got the reach so she's not getting any re-rolls her strength die is not going to be buffed at all when she's in close combat with this javelin but doing blood damage is really quite nasty to be perfectly honest it's uh, it's it's very um hmm. it's it's very much it's very different to doing the the stun really you can just delete models perhaps and when you mix it in with her movement of 12 inches she's uh, she's certainly got the ability to seek out any weak points but uh, just carry on quickly the javelin throw is a one off i presume she uh, gets it back after after that because she can t- continue to use the javelin in close combat afterwards but for once for one use you can throw that javelin uh, for medium range and it because it's a throwing got the throwing trait that means she can uh, do it after moving without losing any of her dice either so that's pre- that's, that's really handy uh, moving on to the traits the acrobat skills there to give her um, that extra mobility and the ability to dodge bullets that's nothing new there what is new is that she doesn't get the plus one inch movement anymore since night models decide you know um, a modified the uh, acrobat rule just to make it so that that plus one inch move model uh, plus one inch move isn't applicable anymore so your movement trait is your movement trait from now on deal with it uh, charismatic is there really for crew building because I think I don't know how many people have that much room for extra free agents anyway but uh, there you go in case you wanted to do some sort of themed team ups or something there, there she is combat flips an interesting one uh, spe- special action so uh, you know it, it, it's one of three special actions she's got so uh, take so pick carefully gives her that extra bit of movement perhaps though when uh, she's in when she's in base contact with an enemy there uh, confusion is uh, where you tar- yeah that's the one where you uh, can reduce any a, a target model's attack and defense by one for a turn which is uh, pretty useful uh, they have to uh, you have to do an opposed willpower roll against them which is probably going to win but uh, which you're probably going to get sorry shall I say um, but uh, yeah yeah it's it's potential especially when she's dealing blood damage bear in mind so and goad can be used to move enemy models always potentially very useful and finally the voices means that um well it's the same one that she's always got in her suicide squad incarnations uh, the voices mean well it's the margot robbie rule i think actually i don't think anyone else has got it apart from her alias characters um they're the one it's the one where uh, she can use her tactical action as any other sort of action so instead of doing her move uh, manipulate or attack she can actually get another special action or even she can do movement twice it specifically says she can perform the same action so she can move 24 inches in a turn if you really want to cover some distance for future activations and whatnot so overall this model um, serves the same sort of purpose as your usual Harley Quinns because she shares many of the traits and statistics of the old one but this model will kill models outright which is uh, pretty hardcore to be perfectly honest um, compared to the previous ones um, the fact that she doesn't get any re-rolls or you know, any benefits to her strength die or any even additional strength die or whatnot means that she's not going to be so handy against you know models with uh, actual decent fighters like you know a Batman or any model that has um, you know decent defensive capabilities. Then she's not. She might struggle to do some telling damage to them. But uh, if your enemy's got a glass cannon, 
so someone who hits much harder than he defends or you know or just you know if there's a if there's a particular enemy a henchman who's about to do some shenanigans for objectives which you really want to stop she can she has the speed to get in there and the ability to just kill them in one round of attacks if she's you know reasonably fortunate these stats especially if she has audacity and she uses confusion first she can reduce a um, an average say henchman defense of three down to a port or paltry two and she's really going to be able to lord it over them and probably do some quite nasty damage so that's her i, th I think she's a you know a they managed to take another version of the same character and actually put a different spin on it so there you go she does have her place let's move on to blood sport let's see here we are put his quick thing up for you okay here he is uh right so uh here's another free agent as you can see uh, same trait same fa you know faction abilities as, as, as harley quinn just works for anyone except the goodies since i guess i think he's an assassin of some sort uh 78 rep 400 dollars uh, so he'll be he, he's going to have a lot more firepower than harley quinn but uh, let's see why uh fire uh, willpower and endurance 7 7 very similar stats as what we just saw 4 4 for willpower uh, for attack and defense so yeah it's, his strength value is four plus he's got a decent movement of 10 it's kind of kind of the average now i think across the board for third edition models and uh, the, the special of three is standard you're not going to see anything different there his weaponry again is pretty interesting he's got a sharp sword so the sharp lets him re-roll that you know strength die as we all know uh double blood never sniff at double blood it's not his real um, forte because as you can see he's got four rounds of ammunition on his uh, on, on his blood sports guns which means he can shoot every single round and um, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a solid shot as well so with two um, blood damage per per uh, shot uh, per hit sorry three three normal three normal attack dice you know and yeah it's a firearm so pretty dash useful um, I'm just going to skip ahead in his traits actually to get to living arsenal just to give you some sort of more perspective on why he's uh, so bloody useful because uh, these guns can also be given one of three separate types of uh, shots living arsenal I think is uh, let's see who gets that as well oh yes it's the um the Grim Knight, the alt the alternative Batman with all the guns, who has this other role as well, has this role as well. Sorry, uh, he can either in you know increase his range from short to medium and gain scope, which I think allows him to ignore the night rule. Uh, so there you go. He can have he can make his rounds explosive and anti tank, which very situational nice to have or finally more more likely to come out than that last one is assault and red dot so assault means he can move and shoot without losing any dice and the red dot lets him re-roll a miss so uh, yeah that's the one I'd be going for most of the time in practice however these other ones might have their place too interestingly because of the film I know night models wouldn't want to modify an existing trait but they could have given him a flamethrower one but hey never mind uh, <laughs> so yeah let's go back he's got his Kevlar vest just to uh, let's see uh, b -b 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 when a model takes the damage from any attack or special or reduce number of oh yes he reduces the uh, incoming damage by one so it's you know that's a bit of a that's a bit of a toughening factor shall we say um, outlaw field commander is his special choose another friendly model within four inches in line of sight that model gains plus two attack counters or plus two defense counters lovely so uh, yeah he's a bit of a, he's he's, uh, he's he's a buff to nearby models as well he's got ranged master just in case he wasn't deadly enough at shooting already this model gains plus one to attack dice rolls when performing ranged attacks so plus one to hit for shooting nice you know he's also uh, i think there's expert marksman somewhere else as well he's sharpshooter lets him ignore cover altogether uh, all ranges um bloody handy and finally protector cleo Cazzo or Cazzo is rat, uh, that means he's the protector of rat catcher 2 that's her alias cleo Cazzo and um uh, yeah, so that, I don't think I've seen Protector before. I might have missed it from somewhere in a part of the collection I don't own. So uh, there you go. But while well, the friendly model with that name alias, so uh, Ratcatcher 2, is within four inches of Bloodsport, um, they can, oh, you can choose Bloodsport as the recipient of the attack. So yeah, there you go. Um, let's see. Is it... <laughs> Yeah, okay. So um, I guess you, you choose that before attack dice are rolled. 
but of, if I'm wrong, let me know. If anyone who does know the rules <laughs> is better at this than me um, knows for a fact, then uh, yeah. But otherwise, yeah. So he can take incoming damage, which would otherwise hurt uh, rat, the probably squishier rat catcher model. So yeah, there you go. Pretty pretty damned useful. So where does blood sport sit altogether in uh, in terms of uh, the crews and stuff? Well, he's not there to um, score snitch cut he's not there to play subjective he plays suspect markers is he or pick them up or run around picking them up he's uh, he doesn't have say a grapple gun or anything to get around very quickly as such he's got fairly average movement but he has offensive firepower in spades and anyone getting in close to him into base contact so to speak to shut him down he can then dish him out with the sword instead if they're not particularly uh, defensive in nature you can't just put henchmen in combat with him and expect them to get away with it and also he can move and just shoot anyway with the um with his living arsenal rule so yeah nothing particularly wrong with blood sport he is there if you he is a 78 point somewhat reason he's quite reasonably priced in terms of funding as well 400 dollars for all of that offensive range firepower pretty damn useful he's, he's just pretty cheap um and he is a model deleter he's uh he's your new dead shot shall we say um but he's got a bit more flexibility than you know the ongoing dead shot um probably need to do run some stats to see who would be better at various ranges etc etc but not for me right now and uh, yeah yeah i think is if you want to you know so if you've got a crew that uh, already does a lot of scoring of objectives but you actually just need to invest some points into something that's actually going to put some pressure on your opponent's um, you know models make them take cover etc you could certainly not you could certainly go much further wrong than taking blood sport plus you get to use the glorious idris elba in your crew and who would not want that okay right so i'm gonna just take a quick break uh, make sure this recorded properly and i will be uh, checking out the next couple of models right okay uh, let's have a look at tdk otherwise known as the detachable kid or nathan fillion i don't know I, I, whatever you whatever you whatever floats your boat but here's his stat card as you've been seeing for a while by now already <laughs> and uh, yes yeah, nice and easy one to get into interestingly yeah another free agent don't forget all of the models today on this video are going to be free agents in rank so uh, not not leaders or sidekicks so they can't be leading crews which would be odd if they could but they're not henchmen either so none of them are going to benefit from inspire but i'll cover that hopefully in a little bit uh, yeah so again he'll work for anyone apart from the bat the goodies crew the batman crew 36 reps so he's a cheap free agent which is interesting don't get many of those um and you know so he can fit into crews where you might not otherwise have you know the capability but let's see what he does because this guy's not a beat stick not like the previous two of sorts willpower and endurance six for a model this cheap is pretty good he's got very pedestrian statistics otherwise though so um three and three for his attack and defense putting on kind of average henchman levels four plus for strength really not much to write home about depending on what weapon you've got attack so movement eight which is uh, kind of on the low end of average these days to be honest so obviously those legs are weighing him down a bit um but yeah and he's special of three but yeah so there you go uh, interestingly he's got a detachable attack so uh, yes he can break his arms off and go and slap people dealing one point of stun damage so it's, a, it's basically an unarmed attack uh, reach eight so he can attack up to eight inches away which is kind of funny for his close combat attack I don't know how that might work in I don't know what might you know synergize in with that specifically, but you know, there you go. But it also causes enervating three on the enemy, so it can soften them up for a you know a, a blow from someone else in your crew. So if you're playing as a suicide squad specifically, just with the models in this box, say he manages to get a hit in on someone and gives them enervating three, and then Harley Quinn goes in they can't f and then innovated to the maximum they can't then use their efforts against her they're in for a, a nasty potentially very nasty surprise with that javelin i was talking about earlier so there you go um so yeah yeah i guess the, it's just the gross out factor of you know the arms etc doing the innovating work and yeah so his uh, traits he's a criminal which is just a keyword now i can't actually remember if it actually uh, synergizes with anything but it's nice to have for future um he's got light armor you can see so uh, he'll be it's, it's, it's 
so it's one dice will be coming off anything going his way depending upon whether it's a shooting attack or a ranged attack that will be varying in use his detachable arms are awesome as a rule um, a model may place or reveal a suspect marker within eight inches and line of sight if st instead of in contact so detectives eat your heart out if only you had detachable arms then you would be better at it so who needs to be the world's greatest detective when you can just detach your arms to put down things so there you go um yeah that is a rule which will probably get this guy put into a whole bunch into contention for a whole bunch of other teams and well, other other crews across the game this uh, this does probably synergize with just about well at least one card in just about every deck i would expect and on a model this cheap wouldn't be surprised to see it uh, used as um you know to see it used a lot more often in future which is kind of fun you know have these odd i like named characters much more than generic henchmen to be honest and so even the detachable kid whoever he is but uh, you know guys in larry costumes that's what this game should be more about but that's my opinion i could be wrong um he's also got distract which is a much more uh, interesting sort of well, just a basic a beneficial like you know if you give him audacity you get a special act out of it he can distract someone again it's, it's probably handy an enemy model within four inches has to be there and that means that he has to get within four inches of someone and not be dead which is uh can't possibly tricky but um, nonetheless if he does he can reduce their defense by one bearing in mind how heavy some of these other models hit in the crew could really you know potentially set them up for a nasty nasty fall um, but yeah overall so this guy with his detachable arms TDK he does take up your free agent slot so uh, yeah but it's that's, that could be a, you know an in, in, that could be an act in actuality uh, but, you know, loss, you know, negative trait for him overall. You know, you might want ha you might want to take something a bit more meaty for your free agent sometimes. But you know, if he's in there, you could. This is a model that doesn't necessarily need audacity to flourish in any given crew. If you manage to get him into the middle of the game board in turn one, say, and then from then on, he can just sit there without audacity, but just using his tactical action just to pop down suspect markers all over the place, or even um, or reveal enemy ones just you know just within a, an eight inch bubble of the center of the board that can potentially shut down a lot of opponents things that can also potentially um just you know really helps you score your own cards oh, bear with me second two gut two ticks guys beg your pardon where was i uh, yes yeah, so the detachable kid and his rolling cruise yeah yeah the, he fits into a whole bunch i can see him getting quite a lot of play and uh, yeah not fair play to him and uh, yeah good to see a free agent who's not just about punching people or killing people good to have someone you know a bit more subtle in the mix right let's move on to the thinker and if you want subtle we're going to carry on with that theme because the thinker really isn't much of a fighter he's another free agent of course similar price 38 reputation and uh, yes very similar stats as you can see there even less fighty in fact than the t than tdk um so what's he got here he's got you know so he's a bit a uh, bit more willpower a bit less endurance so yeah but overall basically the same stats no weapons at all so don't be using him to attack anyone but it's in his traits where you'll see what he does and again uh, we'll see how it goes so he's got two special actions in scientific which means uh, he scientific allows him to use both of them in the same turn at the cost of one uh, special active you know special action shall we say and uh, his brain enhancers here so brain enhancers is the interesting one because it's really his uh, his unique one brain enhancers those things what make his brain work better uh, when this model reveals or places a suspect, you may draw one objective card. One little sentence there which makes him so worthwhile. It's, you know, again, across many crews that might struggle to cycle their decks at the beginnings of games and things, this trait would be a godsend um, or any other crew which might just be otherwise missing out on its ability to cycle cards due to something that you've taken out elsewhere. Popping this guy in for 38 points he can reveal or place a suspect just about every turn if you if you you know if you if you give him audacity but uh, yeah otherwise it's just he's, yeah again you have to give him audacity to do all this which is um, a bit much for a 38 point model but you know he's the thinker not the uh, not the do everything for free uh, and but uh, yeah the ability to cycle objective cards if you need to bloody handy really bloody handy um 
yeah so there you go rock and roll um also he's got so his, his special actions are also kind of handy computer intrusions like the lightweight hacking uh, which we're seeing a bit more across many of the releases i think they realized hacking was rather too amazingly useful <laughs> to just be dished out to cross everybody uh, computer intrusion is a much smaller version of that only affects suspect markers and only moves them up to two inches but nonetheless can potentially you know score your cards or didn't or just really mess with the opponent's plans etc and uh, persuasive uh, is uh, the one where you what's it do ah uh, yes you at the end of this model's activation you can uh, you can choose an enemy model that he can see and then you can force them to uh, what's it say no one anyone yeah you can literally just force the enemy model that he can see to be the next one to activate again a potential plan messer shall we say really really potentially potentially like game winning in some situations you know if you really get in there and you know how the game works this is a potential yeah, but that said at the very least you can force your opponent to operate to activate a model which he might be wanting to save till the end of the turn or something maybe you know that just to just to really annoy them it will help you uh, you know so if an enemy leaves someone out by underneath a lamppost and they can see them you can then you know you can even from across the board this this trait can come in handy but yeah so the thinker pretty useful uh, much the same as the t is the detachable kid from before he's a model that doesn't beat uh, he but he does help you know he he's got he's got legs in a great deal of different uh, circumstances shall we say um, specifically for helping you to cycle your objective deck so we're seeing a lot more free agents being brought up to scratch for third edition as opposed to just being hangovers from the previous editions of the game and uh, yeah I mean you can again 38 points isn't a massive investment takes up your free agent slot though and uh, yeah so it's, it's not like you, you can't do it it's uh, but you know you you would be giving up you know a potential other colorful character to take this guy but you know he's, he's very handy uh, so yeah I mean I think overall Peter Capaldi has got a place in your ball in your crew not just for the Suicide Squad itself but also perhaps in a variety of different crews in the game as, as a whole well weasel is the next one up and here's his card um, we're staying on the cheap end of things, certainly. Uh, so, Weasel from the Suicide Squad, a free agent worth 30 reps, so the cheapest so far. Um, very much not a not one that's been put in to help you score your cards necessarily or anything like that uh, not your um, you know suspect marker play cards anyway uh, he has no ability I don't think he's got any abilities very much focused around that but let's get into his stats so uh, for 30 points you're getting a willpower 5 endurance 6 uh, model with a 3 stroke 3 attack defense and some very otherwise pedestrian stats so um, he's kind of henchman level stats really for third edition for 30 point for 30 reputation points that's your that's your average there too as well so you know that's pretty standard you know stats for that price range so what else does he bring he's not costing you any funding that's nice um but yeah he's got a whole bunch of traits as you can see there seven in fact and uh, animal means he can move was it a couple of inches uh, does he get any extra movement no not anymore sorry it means he can ignore um, obstacles up to two inches high that's what it does but he is stuck on the ground level so yeah you're staying on the ground level unless you can find some stairs weasel sorry about that um, but yes uh, there you go um, he's also small so he's um, minus one to hit of shooting wow cannibal means he can regenerate if he actually manages to kill anybody get a couple of damage markers off that way um, he's got stealth so at least you know, no one's going to be he can't be seen further than eight inches away so that should hopefully detract from the amount of uh, shooting coming his way um, feral is an old trait really um, it's a special it's a special one so again you'd have to probably get use out of it you would really need to give him audacity giving audacity to a 30 rep model I mean, it's not something you're going to be reliably doing every turn I don't think um, but uh, yeah so what does he do he's, with his really pedestrian stats feral then gives him plus one to hit and claws gives him um, 
unarmed attacks, you know, so he's unarmed, so his normal attacks do blood and stun as opposed to just stun, so that's pretty useful. The split damage is with only three attack dice is really kind of uh, pushing the bounds of what you can consider reliable, to be perfectly honest, really. <laughs> um, it's it's not like he's going to be tearing people apart every turn. He's certainly not a killer croc. Um, he has sneak attack, so if your opponent can't see him at the beginning of his activation, the enemy can't make efforts, but then if you try and take... Um, you know, big. If you try and take big advantage of that, uh, with he can't effort an awful lot himself with his put fairly um, below average willpower of five himself. So you're not going to get a huge amount out of Weasel, even with sneak attack. You can stop your opponent from cancelling your attack altogether, but you're not going to get much. Meanwhile, sorry, going back to Feral, just to point something out, it does give the pinned down effect. Um, which is which doesn't exist anymore. So I'm guessing that's either like they're going to bring pin. They might bring pin down again in future, or a pin down might be um, you know the whole feral trait might be changed to read something else when they get round to it. But you know just to let you know that as it is at the moment, it only gives plus one bonus to attack rolls. So there you are. So what's Weasel do? Mm, not an awful lot to be honest. Um, I don't know if he really has a place myself inside any crews outside of the Suicide Squad itself. In the, within the Suicide Squad team, he is cheap, and that is a great bonus because uh, you're dealing with a whole bunch of kind of chunky points valued, some odd points valued, um, you know, uh, people in it, and having some points left over at the end, you might just be only able to afford a weasel, you know, just about. So uh, yeah, he's, he's he's got a function there, and to be honest. If you've got, you know, he can annoy people probably with his, you know, with his kind of annoying attacks. He could potentially synergize with um, some of the other models as well. As remember, TDK has distract, Harley Quinn has confusion, and if he goes in, he can force enemies to be outnumbered, things like that. Otherwise, he's uh, he's really not going to be doing an awful lot. But you know, you could do, you could for 30 points you might only be able to afford him and an extra model in the suicide squad hey if he's the one who gets chosen to have his head blown up then at least you won't be upset you know so there you go moving on we're going to go to everyone's favorite polka dot man the best case of mummy issues i've seen in film and uh, here he is here's his card he has again 38 rep we're seeing a lot around this value i think they thought about it or something that'd be funny 300 dollars reputation another free agent so uh, take up that slot his, his his stats are actually even more garbage here than what we've got than what we've been used to now five and five for willpower and endurance he's not going to be hitting anyone in close combat and uh, yeah so there you go um contrasting him with his other um well, the other polka dot man in the collection, he's also a bit slower because he doesn't ride around on the dots. He just shoots them, and boy does he shoot them! If you see that, look at this. Let's have a look at that uh, that gun because it's uh, it looks a bit weeny, but we'll see how it gets much much better. Two two rounds of fire, four attack dice. Each do, each hit does one point of blood, but as you can see, it's uh, it's only short range because they're only little only little. It's like you know, it's only like throwing skittles at someone. They're mechanical, so the strength value is um, is always going to be doing its business on threes. Throwing means he doesn't lose any dice when he moves. That's useful. Bleed two is potentially um, well, horrible on a critical. Two points of blood damage is um, something that could really tip the scales. But here it goes. It's exposure. The rule we've seen from uh, Mr. Freeze up until now on his free and his cre freeze guns and things. Exposure means that after the first hit, which will do one point of blood damage, every successive hit will do two points of blood damage instead of the one. So the second hit will mean you're doing three points of blood damage, the third hit will be doing five altogether, and so on and so on. Um, this, with that many shots at close range, if your opponent's not in cover and you know if they've left themselves in the open and you've managed to distract them so they're at minus one defense or even confuse them so they're at minus one defense or what have you you can tear someone apart with this with these gut with this uh, particular ranged attack emptying dots true you do need to set it up somewhat but even without setting it up there's enough firepower here to worry your average henchman potentially if they're not you know if you're if you're not you know care if you're not lucky enough going into his um 
going into his traits he can during the recount phase he on a three plus that's auto repair there auto repair three means on a three plus in the recount phase that's the end of the turn um you can remove one damage another damage marker in play against him um criminals just a keyword from before remember that obstinate means he can always put an effort in um even if he's at his effort limit you know even if he can't normally do so so potentially handy nothing there's going to change the world to be honest especially on this model but we're going to get into it now interdimensional virus is very interesting and very much his own thing since he's the only one around here with an interdimensional virus um at the start of his activation you roll a die on a one to four he gains a free ranged attack this turn and what i'm gonna i don't I'm, I'm, if this action is not used suffer one blood and one stun so a free ranged attack i think means that uh, a free attack basically means that uh, you get to well, do the attack without having to give him audacity for example i don't believe it means he doesn't have to use his um what's the word his oh come on his ammunition okay so he's got two shots for the game on a one to four he has to use one of them at the beginning during the course of his turn but probably otherwise he'll take damage that's probably what the auto repair is there for okay to actually mean that he can uh you know get, he's not just on a ticking time bomb of death himself okay um so there you are uh, it's it does mean that but a freebie ranged attack action in the middle of the game when you when audacity is tight and you just want to do things with other models like you know do some actual suspect play where you because you've got to score points or your heads are going to start popping uh, then yeah being able to attack for free on a you know a 66 percent chance of getting it that's uh, whew, that's that's really handy when you can just keep keep being able to keep give it, putting out the offensive actions when you really need to score po score cards. It's a handy little thing to have, little little release valve there. And finally, he's got releasing the dots as his special activation, and that's just again, it's another bit of suspect play. It's kind of it's just weird. It's just cool. Uh, reveal an enemy suspect within eight inches and line of sight. So there you go. Eight inches means it could be up on another level or down on another level. He might not be otherwise able to reach it, but uh, with that he can. And uh, revealing enemy suspects ties into some of the, well, to at least uh, some of the cards that uh, the Suicide Squad get to play with in their own deck. And again, he can use it to, you can use it to help you in your own crew. If it's not Suicide Squad, say you're playing as someone else, uh, League of Shadows or anyone, you know, they got some cards, some, you know, organized crime I know has some cards relying on you revealing suspects etc being able to do it from long range is you know can just take out a whole bunch of effort on on your part for that so there you go again have to give more audacity really to get the main use out of that uh, to really be able to you know you know get to the cheddar so to speak and on a 38 point model are you going to be doing that every turn i don't know very situational but overall this version of polka dot man is a lot more likely to see play in my personal games than the other one especially in battle reports because i find the the original polka Dot man just a little bit too heavy on the special rules for what he does for me to be able to keep track of it all when i'm trying to play two crews so that's just a personal thing this version of polka dot man a lot more straightforward and i do like him a lot and he's a fun guy into in the in the uh, in the film so i feel strongly on that subject too okay Okay, into the last batch of models for um, this particular release. Rat Catcher 2 is up next though, and uh, so do her very lovely sculpt before. So she does follow on from the original Rat Catcher in a little bit. She's a cheap free agent, as you can see there. 40 reputation, doesn't work for the goodies. Willpower 6, endurance 5, very basic paltry st stats at a base level and no weapons. So uh, she better be bringing something else to the party. And she does, she brings a whole um, bunch of rats in, ter in terms of her sewer swarms uh, which there were three she gets and uh, sewer sw these are the same statistic ones you'll see from uh, the original rat catcher if you are familiar with him you can bring it up on the app though by now uh, well in this one too but yeah sewer swarms are just nothing to write home about themselves but she brings three of them they're very easy to kill they can't do anything to do with suspects of course but they can create poison so they can synergize and uh, overall sort of overwhelm people through you know, like weight of attacks and whatnot but um, going on to what uh, rat catcher 2 stats are because we'll see if there's anything there that really stands out she gets charm which means that enemies have to uh, you know pass a willpower check in order to melee attack her so that could potentially 
frustrate your opponent's plans if they do think they can easily take her out and then accidentally then fail a crucial check at the wrong time that can really do them um yes yeah, so, so let's see she's got gas mask which means she's immune to everything with the gas trait so yeah, of course she is stealth means she can't be shot from anywhere further from eight inches away so that's handy sewer storm threes uh, all the bunch of rules about her, how she places and gets her swarms back because obviously can, she can just keep respawning them afterwards if she needs to and uh, yes her tamer device is her special action so again get best use out of this give, give her audacity but uh, yes, target enemy model within 8 inches and move all friendly sewer swarm models 6 inches towards that model. So keep them near her and uh, that she'll be able to control them and sick them on their enemies, you see. And yes, yeah, so as you can see, it's, um, it's, it's, again, it's not something that's going to kill a Batman or anything like that, but you, you could really tarp it down an enemy and overwhelm them with weight of attacks potentially. And uh, yeah, so there you go. And she's also got the protector um, for blood sport, the same as he had protector for her. So if he's badly wounded, she can take some hits for him, or vice versa. You know, so uh, it's just a nice little thing because they had a connection in the film. So that's quite cool. And uh, yeah, it's uh, overall what she bring to the party a bunch more models basically. <laughs> if you're other all short on numbers because you're uh, you know you're taking an awful lot of other things, you can make your your crew look a bit bigger by taking uh, rat catcher or rat catcher 2 so to speak and uh, yeah yeah she can it's not like they can't do anything at all they can still annoy people you can't shoot if you're in base contact with a rat swarm of course so you know she can annoy enemies that way uh, we'll carry on just as a, like an aside because sebastian the rat which is a model i forgot to show you off show him off well he looks just like this uh, picture does so there you go um again no problems with the sculpt there whatsoever very very easy build just stick him on the base uh yeah but he's a model he's 10 points he's a henchman but you can only take him if you take rat catcher 2 of course so there you go uh, so um he's kind of an add-on for her takes her up to 50 points instead of her being 40 points he's, he's basically like a slightly upgraded um, a rat swarm, basically a sewer swarm, shall we say, has many of the same rules. So stealth, street guy, small animal, amphibious, yeah, you know, all poison immunity. All these things are, are rat traits. Finally, the, what he does bring, though, as a side to anything else, is um, he has charismatic rat, and um, that is um, all. Yeah, so while all friendly models with swarm within eight inches of line of sight of him get a free effort, so that will help them when they're attacking. Not so much when they're defending because they're kind of garbage, but yeah, when they're attacking, getting extra efforts kind of handy, an extra attack. Um, in addition, during this model, if you're less than three sewer swarms in play, you may make one effort with Sebastian to place another sewer swarm within two inches of this model. Uh, so yeah, he can regenerate your rat swarms as well. So with this version of Rat Catcher, you're, and if you if you take Sebastian, then between them, you're not likely to run out of those rat swarms, which is oh dearly what you're bringing this model for. Okay, okay, so that's you know what you're uh, you know that's, that's all the models i'm just gonna take a quick break and i'll be back just to talk about really quickly how you know how you can play this crew whether or not it's just a group of individuals okay so having looked at the models and looked at the rules what do we think about the new suicide squad but well, what do i think personally i think this is a great addition a whole bunch of free agents none of this uh, use them as a henchman but they're named and costumed and weird but uh, no these are actual dedicated free agents which you have to really consider take putting into your crew or not the ter the phrase free agents in third edition comes up quite a lot is audacity hog because you get four dusty points for your whole crew and uh, whereas henchmen you can get use out of them by inspiring them by keeping them within eight inches of your boss you can't do that with um, free agents so um, you're kind of forced to give them one of your precious precious audacity points in order to get the most out of them and that certainly applies in these but i think overall there's a lot to say for these guys even the cheaper ones they've got some really good situational uses so uh, if you're in the middle of that game you're certainly not likely to uh, lose out for giving them audacity unless you're playing like me a dummy but uh, yeah overall though is this a, just a box which uh, deals with um, you having your crew 
you know, having them as your crew, you certainly can. Is it a balanced crew in its own? Yes, definitely. You've got a good mixture of um, hitters at close range and at uh, well, and at long range with Bloodsport and to a lesser extent Polka Dot Man. He, you know, he's more short range firepower. You've also got some guys who do some uh, really impressive suspect marker work in terms of the Thinker and TDK. And yeah, yeah, it's it's just uh, it's pretty impressive. TDK, you don't even need to give or dash two. You can pop him in the middle of the of the board and just uh, keep messing around with suspects all game for the rest of it until he's killed inevitably. But uh, yeah, so weasels even there to make up the points and gives you that extra activation. And you've got the sewer swarms there to sort of tar pit enemies down a bit as well, and uh, you know, and just be there to be general harassment. So. It's uh, it's pretty interesting. It's a good it's a good box to use, and I I might well find you might well see me putting them into a battle report in their own right. Incidentally, Night Models has slightly updated the rules for teams in an update from well a couple of months ago at least now I think um, at the time of recording. So I should really have mentioned that somewhere elsewhere. But um, what you'll find is that they um, have actually given the teams preset lists of objective cards from across all the different crews, and the Suicide Squad's got its own now. So that's very exciting no longer having to cobble them together depending upon which models you've taken no longer feeling obliged to take katana so i can put some um, batman cards in etc etc uh, but yeah you get some uh, cards from a variety of existing crews and again it's all in the app that's where you'll find them um, and i recommend you finding a way to download that app either on your phone or on your desktop computer with an emulator or something to to find out what those cards are if you're at all interested because it gives a new lease of life to teams not just the suicide squad but also looking forward to seeing the bat family now um, in their new iteration with their own particular um, designated cards etc as well um, who else oh, yes yeah, so but you know so is this box worth buying not just as definitely I say not just as a, a crew in their own right you won't only find them useful for that if you've got existing crews that aren't the court of owls and they can take free agents then there's going to be something in here for you I reckon um, a whole bunch more um, variety for one thing you've got um, free agents here for all different types of situations anything you're finding deficient um, or if you just want to try something you know try something new you've got you know blood sport or polka dot man to nuke people or uh, yeah or harley quinn as a very very fast killing machine you know but uh, don't get a hit because she's not the toughest of uh, your, your models okay um i think i'm just about done now i think this video has probably gone on rather too long for a quick critique there's a lot of models to cover though um I'm Shield War 100. I hope you, uh, well, I hope you listened to it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. If you have, thank you very much. It does mean a lot when people actually watch them, these videos. And uh, yeah, I, I'll see you in the next next video. It's going to be coming up regarding a few of the extra models surrounding this uh, this Suicide Squad release. And looking forward to seeing how they gel in too. Okay. Um, if there's anything I've missed, any particular roles you think I kind of uh, glazed over, or any models which you think would definitely not get used at all then uh, yeah let me know in the comments below and uh, we'll have a, we'll, we'll see about it there okay right well I'm sure 100 as well as I said earlier thank you very much for watching and ta-ra